Dad Pod. Welcome this is a video show, thing as well. We have a name. Podcast. Or midlife crisis. Howdy, daddy. Mm. Midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Dadcast. That's not bad, actually. Dadcast with Nivea Men. Try Ireland's number one skincare brand. All right, you're all very welcome along to this week's episode of Dadcast. I say this week's, it's not quite every week, but, you know, we're getting there at about our own pace and uh, all the dads are here. Adrian is here. Good afternoon, morning, after, evening. Adrian is here. This podcast could be any time. Hello, everybody. In body, if not in spirit. And Dave is here. Dave, how are you? Gentlemen, I'm very well, thank you. Bring in the big dogs, as usual. Right, um, let's get straight down to business. Dadcast is in partnership with Nivea Men. Want to feel great in your skin? Nivea Men has you covered from sensitive, tailored skincare to cleansing and anti-age. Try Ireland's number one men's skincare brand. I could do with a little bit of anti-aging at the moment. <laughs> it just stops right further here. aging. I don't think it sends you backwards. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd settle for the process of aging to slow in any way whatsoever. Cycling 120 kilometers around the Connor Pass, I'd say, is counter- to uh, I mean, I, I, it's obviously good for your inner health. The um, the stress of it on your body must be uh, clearly revealing that you weren't watching the show this week, where I revealed that I didn't, in fact, do the hundred and twenty kilometers. Very, very aware, very aware. Uh, was there anybody uh, cycling the Connor Pass that wasn't having a midlife crisis? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no. But that's you know, I mean, yeah. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. We're all we're all trying to deal with the midlife crisis at the moment, aren't we? All doing things that are, we're trying to take ourselves out of our comfort zone. But obviously, Jerry, you just narrowly failed to do that when the chance to ride, ride those one twenty k presented itself. No, are I did. Too do... young for a midlife crisis? Not really. Not if no. you're like. Not well, it depends. You do... Yeah, you're going you to we're we're, we're at an age where where you're physically just about still able to do certain things. But in four or five years, you just will not be able to do it. So that's what you have to. I played my first competitive hurling match in 31 years on Sunday. Just why not? Now, when I say I played a match, I played the last seven or eight minutes. But um, yeah, I just, <laughs> the day is coming very soon where that physically will not be possible. So Jerry, you need to get on that bike and do that 120K. I did the 56. So basically the 120 is like, there's, there's two sections. It's like a triathlon. There's like a short one and a long one. And the 120 is basically a continuation of the full version of it. And um, a big shout out to Kelleher's Toyota Garage in Tralee, where one of the Dadcast fans was like, oh, hey, how's it going? Big fan of Dadcast. So I was stopping there uh, charging. He was also on Dick Max later on that night, I realized afterwards, but I was um, too well on to uh, hold a proper conversation after my the exertion of my 56K, which nearly killed me, by the way. Which 56 is, the long is still good going. Mm. Long as cycle Up a mountain. Done. Well, so at, at the end of the 56, they're like, oh, down the hill for Connor Pass, down the hill for Connor Pass. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go down the hill. And I got to the bottom of the of the Connor Pass and I looked up and it just seemed like endless, like something from Lord of the Rings. And the wind was whistling into my face. And I was like, the smart thing here to do is just to accept my, I, I'm going to take a lick in and keep on ticking. I went home and I huddled in bed for an hour. And then I got up and I watched Aston Villa kill Newcastle and it was literally the best thing that I could have done as opposed to I would have I would have died I actually think I'm you know one of those like heart attack waiting to happen people like airlifted from the from the mountain yeah yeah exactly you would have made like six one Ooh. news exactly <laughs> Ooh, clown what, look at that fat bastard what's going to happen yeah. that's what everybody would be like they'd be, they'd be like oh he died he died what did he take look at him when they go to the guy from the emergency services, he's not expressing sympathy. He's putting out a warning for middle-aged men to just take all precautions in future and make sure you bring all the necessary equipment. Yeah. The world of sport is in mourning this evening with the uh, sad... Uh, I was going to use the word untimely, but I mean, given the conversation we're just having now, there you go. maybe we don't even qualify for that anymore. Louis C.K. does a whole routine about um, when he dies. He's like, died of a heart attack. And he goes, yeah, that makes sense. No. And I was like, oh, no way. Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Obviously. Like, yeah. So I decided not to die that day and to live another day and um, to go again. Dave, you're, you've got the cut of a wiry cornerback about you. 
Um, no, not really. I don't really know what I am. Honestly, the last time I played an actual competitive game was at the age of 12 at Croke Park, the old Croke Park, for those of our listeners who are old enough to remember that, what pla- what that place looked like. But um, yeah, look, it was interesting. It was uh, I was a little uncomfortable, a little scared. I won't lie to you. But uh, you look, go for it. I won't be able to do it for much longer, so why not? Who are you playing? We were playing a team called Larelth Jarag. Good team. Beat, beat us comfortable enough in the end, but um, it's an awful lot easier to be pucking the ball around with your eight-year-old or doing some skills work with somebody else on the field when there's nobody up your ass trying to flake the shins off you. It's much easier to control the ball and uh, send it over the bar from 40 metres when you're all alone, as I learned on yeah. Sunday. But uh, look, we'll, we'll give it another rattle in a couple of weeks and see how we go. A few minutes here and there, I think, might be all I'll be expect- that'll be expected of me. I would be interested to hear from uh, other dads listening to Dadcast about their middle-aged crisis. Dadcast at offtheball.com or you can tweet us at dadcastpod. Um, I'm very, very quickly going to get some um, uh, correspondence we had. Uh, Steve, Stephen Headley, who has been a, a long-term, long-time follower on Twitter, has been in touch to say, uh, guys, it's okay. Mine are 33, 30, 13 and 7. I cherish reading to the youngest and all those things I won't ever see again. As for the teens, you lose them as they wander the Sahara trying to find themselves. You'll roar at them, be infuriated, but have faith that you've given them the tools to explore. My 13-year-old is into three sports, so I'm lucky to have to coach him and be taxi. It's the only things we have. However, the eldest graduated, have their own lives, still need you for little things, and you can only look and go that they come out the other side and kind of hope uh, that they come out the other side. I'm now a grandpa, so I get to hold hands and read to my grandchild, full circle. I think the most important thing in society as parents is the moral compass. Tech education to a certain degree, being able to make good decisions on who they might keep as mates, right from wrong. Substance abuse is probably the things that keep me awake at night. So that's somebody who's slightly further down the line from us at the moment. Yeah, if anyone wasn't listening to our last episode, we were talking about the, it's not quite a grieving process, but you know, the loss of those days where you're reading to them at night and you're holding they want to still want to hold your hand when you're walking into the school and they uh they're all they still want loads of hugs and all that kind of stuff and eventually those days will just evaporate they just will no longer exist and whether what what that feels like so that's obviously we've uh we've piqued his interest there thanks with thanks to him for giving us a little bit of background as to how it feels as the years go on uh, you maybe you don't mourn it at all maybe life is just life and the months and days and weeks and years just continue to go by and you don't realize that those things are gone. They just went and yeah, it, it the next day just became the next day. But I don't know, even this morning we were walking to school and um, even the eight-year-old still had, I had a, a hand either side of me walking to school. It was amazing. So that that's all going to end pretty soon, I'd say. But um, it was interesting. I was listening to Joe on Golf Weekly there last week. He had Shane Ryan on. And Shane Ryan had written a long piece about what it's like to turn 40 and how you realize pretty quickly that when you get into your late 30s and early 40s, that actually time starts just going even faster still. And he, Shane Ryan had spoken to his dad about, well, what is it like when you get into your 50s and 60s when life starts to slow down a little? Do you find that it's it's back when you were five, six, seven, eight years old, the time actually doesn't seem to fly by. And fortunately, Shane Ryan's dad said to him, no, it actually just goes even faster when you get into your 60s and 70s. There's no let up in the pace of life. It just whizzes by. And Joe felt, well, I suppose you're told to live in the moment. And if you do take a few seconds to live in the moment, then you're not really living in the moment. But I think you are. Like if you can manage to take three seconds just to go, this is great. You really are living that moment. It's you're not letting it pass you by by taking the time to acknowledge how amazing that moment is. I don't think anyway. No, it's yeah, it's kind of I, I would, the way you've described it there, Dave. You are correct. <laughs> well, I do think that's important. Um, and like uh, I, I, this is quite an existential conversation that we're having. But that bit where you're like, this is good, which obviously can feel a bit like tempting fate sometimes, because obviously it never lasts. But it probably is worth um, trying to have those moments, and when they're there, to cling on desperately to them because it ain't gonna last. Yeah, like I'm not saying you whip out your mobile phone and take the picture straight away, or you see some people like 
you know, that unbelievable picture of Shawnee O'Shea's late winning free against Dublin last year. And in the background, there's thousands of people with their phones out. Were those people really living that moment? It is, in fairness, an unbelievable 10-second yes. video to be able to show people. I don't understand why people have an issue with people no. taking their phone. Like, I it's not... It. It's sort of, it was like the... Was it the LeBron James? Where yeah, Phil yeah. Knight was the only person in the building now. But again, it's not... The show, everyone wouldn't have had their phone out if that was David Clifford in open play kicking the point because you're not sure if it's about to happen. Everybody knew it was about to happen. There was a pause in play. Everyone knows it's going to be a big moment. And you're still watching it. You don't celebrate any... Like, give people a fucking break. It's the sport police. It absolutely drives me bonkers. It's it's so prevalent across all sports. You can do this and you can't do that. And also, like, I've taken video games. You can absolutely be watching the game and have your phone out. Like, you're not looking for a bloody masterpiece that you're going to be watching back in 20 years' time. You're dropping it into a WhatsApp group. You're putting it on social media, whatever. And it's done. Like, but do you not, are you, were you not watching? Those people were watching Sean O'Shea's free through their phone, though. You don't. You don't. You, no, don't you can just hold your uh, phone up and yeah. watch it. Yeah, you're not. You're not zooming in, going. I need to make sure you have the perfect angle. And also, by the way, if you've paid your money into that LeBron James game or into Crow Park or whatever you've done, you're entitled to go and enjoy it. Oh, of course. I've been told. Yeah. Like it's, um, I don't. Just... Yeah, I don't agree with the score and the mockery of these people who do pull their phones out. Like, why don't? Why don't you just commit the memory to your mind and you don't need to be recording it? But I, I, I hope that in years to come, I will be thankful for those times where I, I just stopped or stood in, the, stood in the doorway while the two lads were you know playing together like best friends as opposed to beating 50 shades <laughs> of crap out of each other that one, that one moment <laughs> yeah and I do that try and do that regularly where I just kind of almost creep yeah. into the room and just look across the room and go this is class I know yeah. that in 12 seconds time I'm going to have to put the referee's uniform back on and wade into the middle of this and try and stop the physical abuse occurring but for the moment this is deadly and i'm really enjoying what i'm seeing so um, it is incredible how quickly it turns <laughs> with two boys in particular because i've just been on holidays for two weeks with every minute of every day together um and the amount of times i've looked at the two of them and they're sort of just messing together and having the crack and occupying each other and goes god and so good we've like two kids 15 months apart like they're best mates and then within five minutes, I'm going, well, like we're going to have to move them into separate rooms when we get back to that. It's like, they, they <laughs> can't even be in the same room together anymore without killing each other and annoying each other and winding each other up. And it's like, oh my God. The R2 are, are a bit like sort of um, similar. It's 22 months between them, whatever. And they've just started. So we've just started to say to them. So instead of like putting them to bed, tucking them in, turning the lights off and saying, right, it's sleep time. We'll say, you know, you can have 10 or 15 minutes of playtime, which, as you've said, Nathan, after a couple of weeks off school, the 10 or 15 minutes is kind of turn into an hour and uh, can end in all kinds of interesting areas. But they'll they'll sort of actively shut the door or almost shut the door so they can get about their own playtime and their own conversation. And it's been just fascinating to eavesdrop and try and resist the urge at times to go in and go, Oi, stop doing that or like stop talking to your brother or sister, whatever, whatever way. Just to let them at it and see how it all unfolds, um, but it's just really interesting um, to see also the stuff that they're saying to each other, the expressions and the dynamics between them, the stuff that they're clearly picking up from myself and my wife is uh, concerning. Certainly on one level, when you hear it back from somebody else's mouth, you're like, "Oh, okay, must uh, must do better." I'll often surreptitiously leave a chocolate biscuit on the table beside them and they're in the mid when they're really absorbed in a battle with their soldiers or some lego or whatever it is and they're really getting into it and they're making up characters and and they'll just kind of look to the right and there'll be a chocolate biscuit there sitting on that and that's like fair play to you lads you've been playing now for 45 mm. minutes no fights that's just a little reward you're amazing it's almost like they see the biscuit and go, <laughs> we'll show this cup shite <laughs> exactly what we're made of. Now, as soon as the biscuit devoured, then someone has annoyed the other person over something. And next of all, it's absolute pandemonium. The bigger fella is telling me how much he hates the little fella and how he wishes he'd had, he never had a brother in the first place. And, how like he's the worst part of his life and all this kind of when literally five minutes earlier they were the best of friends it's a, like it is well put nathan just it's it can sometimes can just be a two second thing where you just go from one extreme to the other 
and it's chaos and hatred and vitriolic abuse. It's well, that's brothers, isn't it? And I don't know whether the brother sister dynamic is similar, and perhaps possibly yeah. is depending on how close they are in age. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, every pair of brothers in the history of mankind have have flipped from one extreme to the other, haven't they? That is, that's just humans, I think. Uh, next bit of correspondence is uh, from Dave, not you, Dave. Uh, hi, lads. Glad to have you back on the podcast on Spotify and on other uh, podcast networks as well. Dad of four boys, 10, 8, 6, and 3. And yes, I've got the snip. I'm <laughs> too late. <laughs> Whoa. My staff and my wife use a grow clock for our kids. At night time, the face changes to a star. In the morning time, it changes to the sun. We found them very good at teaching our boys to stay in bed when it's night time and when it's okay to get out of bed in the mornings. Obviously, we had talks about if it's an emergency for the toilet. The discussion we have now with the younger two is if it's still bright or sunny out, it's not time, not night time. And so the explanation of the seasons ensues. Keep up the good work, says Dave. So that was um, was this a conversation about getting people to bed. I think it was. was yeah, it? we had we had. I might still have one of those grow clocks uh, in the youngest bedroom. Again, like anything, it sort of works for a couple of months and then they get too smart for it and go, wait a second, I see a glimmer of light under the blackout blind there. That must mean it's time for me to get up at half five in the morning. We've, uh, the next thing we've noticed is with the six-year-old. So like normally he's the first up in the house and like everybody else the four of the rest of us would be happy to stay in bed until midday, but he'll be up at sort of six or half six, sometimes seven o'clock if you're very lucky. And uh, he's not the sort to sort of go downstairs and um, just go about his business. Um, so everybody has to be up. But the thing that we've noticed recently is um, last week, you could hear him getting out of bed, a couple of the drawers opening, Heard him going out to the bathroom. These are all things like, so he's out of bed and he's straight into our bed or he's into his sister's bed or he's in waking up his brother or whatever. He's very eager to get everybody involved. But there was this like 10 minute process of stuff going on that wasn't waking people up and seemed to be from the sounds that he was getting himself ready for the day. And then he appears into the room. Um, this must have been Monday. Uh, school uniform on, teeth brushed. I've been to the toilet. Uh, just this, like, I was like, we were like sort of looking at each other. What is just it is literally there's been no lead into this, no indication what's happening, just totally bizarre. And anyway, that he produced later on that night, he he was sitting down with a bit of A4 paper and produced, came back with this list, uh, which is which is very funny in a lot of ways, including how he's spelled everything, but a list of chores that he's got for himself. And the chores are all those things: getting dressed, made, bed made absolutely perfectly teeth all this is outrageous this. behavior outrageous dave right so i'm like what's he up to what is going on here <laughs> so anyway after the list was produced it was like so how much do i get for this <laughs> <laughs> and i was like well that is a good start that is a good start we might need to add in some other things you know for it to be actually chores rather than just stuff you're doing for yourself and he was like okay yeah like um you know, if I made my own lunch or if I made a snack for myself, I was like, yeah, yeah, also good things for the list. But, you know, we need to get you involved in some like actual grunt work here. But an interesting departure. We haven't agreed a fee yet, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. What do people do for pocket money? Uh, well, our kids, are they just get whatever the fuck they want. And so there's no need for pocket money. That's, that's, uh, yeah. that's the problem. That's the same situation here. We've, uh, because the kids have their own Revolut account, their, you know, under 18 Revolut accounts and their own little Revolut cards and they can uh, go off down to the shop now by themselves and, uh, you know, on a Saturday and buy themselves something. So we're trying to figure out again for the, if you do your chores, we will give you a certain amount at the end of the week. But a part of me is also going, but we also just buy everything for you anyways, whenever you want it. So what is, we're just giving you more money on top of all the stuff we already give you. But they I'm like that to... bit of independence. Don't they? Well, they, they do, like yeah. But they also like you to pay for everything. Yeah, like, they, they, they like they, it both they, ways. They know that the, when they ask, they'll get. Like, I'm trying to um, build a, an environment where the two boys are reading for pleasure. As in, like, oh, do you know what? If nothing else to do, I'm just going to grab my book and knock off another 10 pages of whatever book I'm in the middle of reading. I said, right, well, do you know what? Every time you finish a book, and it has to be a, an actual book, not, you know, five pages, most of are filled with pictures. I'll give you five euro for every book you read from start to finish. And 
are able to tell me what it was about once you finished it. Five euro. And they're like, oh, five euro. And after about 10 minutes, they're like, well, hang on, if we need five euro, we can just ask you. Like, why would I read a book that five euro? And I remember back in the day when we used to get a, I admit, a pound coin or something on a Sunday afternoon. We just thought that was amazing. And we would be allowed to spend that on whatever we wanted, whether it was a comic book or sweets or panini stickers, whatever it might have been. We just thought this money was so important. We cherished it. You could try and save it if you wanted. I don't know. I think there's, I think the horse has bolted on that with, with today's children. There's just too much stuff and more disposable income. And they just don't seem to grasp the value of money as early in life as we did. Or am I just kind of looking back on, with rose-tinted glasses on that? Well, there wasn't as much money, I suspect, when we were growing up as uh, there is now. Everything comes a little bit easier for them. Yeah. Well, there, I guess there as they get... Stuff. Yeah, there that's the other thing. There was no stuff. Like, you you, you got, like, stuff uh, once once a year at your birthday and once a year at Christmas. Whereas now there's, like, just these mounds of plastic and soft toy bollocks. that Like, it's it's incessant. Uh, this is a very middle-aged conversation back in my day <laughs> yeah but I wonder is there as they get a bit older as they become teenagers does the balance change then of you start to give them more money but start to spend less on them yeah, Whereas at the moment, so the pocket money increases but actually you're buying them far less stuff so they're making their own decisions as to how does that develop but are there not bigger exceptional outlays when they're in their teens, like hundreds of euro and school tours and sports gear and they don't they don't give a shit about that stuff though, do they? That's like well, you just you just be paying for that stuff anyway. It's like yeah, give <laughs> me football my switch and my new football, yeah. yeah. I've grown out of them. Need brand new. Yeah, but ultimately, it's a false economy. You're you think you're saving money because you're not giving the pocket money, but you're, they're costing you a fortune on a a month to month basis with the with the bigger outlays that need to be catered for. And, yeah, that, and, and as you say, no appreciation for it. Oh, I mean, the lack of appreciation for anything. It's just something I think you have to accept until maybe they have their own kids. That was the bit where, you know, when when did you finally become appreciative for the work that your parents did for you, you ungrateful dickheads? I think my parents are still waiting for that day to arrive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you're right. You do something for them or you bring them somewhere. And they just, you just get abuse for it. Yeah. And you're just thinking, why did we decide to come here today? Why did I spend the 30 euro ahead it was and whatever ticket it was we bought? Right. Like when we're all, all we're told is oh, I'm bored and this is crap and I want more sweets. And you're just, why, why well, that's what you get just... for bringing them to the National uh, Museum, Dave. That's... <laughs> I think we should have just stayed at home. Yeah. Just like mess around the back. It's, it's even for the good stuff. Like I brought them to Mario the movie the weekend. Whatever it's called, Mario, Super Mario. Yeah, it's decent. It was decent. Uh, very good, yeah, very good. But yeah. like the um, there is no thanks for it. Like it's they go in and get everything lapped up to them, and and the car on the way home, it's like guff, guff, guff. And I don't know. Like we were literally saying to them on the way home, "Why are we doing this for you? Like you're here giving us shit." I mean, we might use slightly different language. <laughs> oh no! I, I, sometimes I am like I've had enough of your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but when we went to the cinema with our parents or got brought to Funderland or know, when whatever, we were up. Did, did we were we in the car on the way home going, oh, mommy and daddy, you're so great. We really appreciate the time <laughs> and the effort you put into bringing us this trip today. We thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. We explored <laughs> new areas. We we took a great deal of learnings from what's happened over the last three hours. We're so lucky to have you as parents in our hold. We did. Come on, lads. Well, I can I can top all this, lads. I can top all this. So uh, I'm just back from Disney World. And uh, as we were in a queue in Disney World in Florida, uh, the two boys started wondering, could we go to Center Parks later this year? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Like, oh, the rapids are, I want to go to the rapids. I'm like, do, do you see where we are? Do you see where we are? <laughs> Do you know how much this has cost? Oh my so god! Did, did you uh, did you say um, no, my good gentleman? That that will not be something that was there around. I don't know that. Well, by 
by the time I thought about it, I was like, God, I was like, well, I don't think we'll be going to set apart. I was like, God, I can't believe we're taking our holiday in like April and it's not going to be no more holidays for the rest of the year. You're right, kids. That is a depressing thought. Uh, yeah, I was, I gave the whole, uh, do you not appreciate? Like, again, it's like, yeah, not really. It's like, you know, you made the decision to come here. We didn't, we didn't make the decision to come here. You decided to do this. We're just hanging along for the ride. <laughs> God damn you. That's what I realized. There will never be appreciation. So we just have to accept that. Like, the occasion to be, there will be, thanks for bringing us today. And I'm like, ah, that's great. Fair play to you. But more often than not, it's like, what's next? What have you done for me lately? We're actually yeah. on the drive. We're on the drive home from it. And it's, right, what happens now? Do we get to watch TV when we get home? Is it be- Don't dare say it's bedtime as soon as we get home. Don't say it. No one's allowed to say it's bedtime as soon as we get home. Okay. But it actually is. Q absolute meltdown. Yeah, well, um, looking forward to the meltdowns being teenage level meltdowns. <laughs> Where they refuse to get in the car with you in the first place. Um, I mean, I'm just going to paint this vista here. We all, we all at the moment live in Dublin and like your children are never leaving because the housing crisis. So they're going to be grown ups burping and farting and fucking in your house. And you're going to have to listen to that for the rest of your life. Just want to try to put that out there. I'm not happy now. If anybody wants to get involved, tagcast at offtheball.com. You're going to need like a mobile home in the back garden for them. Yeah, my wife often says, like if they are stuck here into their 20s and unfortunately for some people nowadays, even their 30s, she's going to be living with like three grown men with all of that bring, what all they'll bring to the party and my God, I I feel sorry for that prospect for her. <laughs> right. Uh, Nathan, you wanted to ask about when's a good time to get a dog, I think. Is that the... Well, so um, we've had a, a real tragedy in the family uh, this morning. <laughs> in fact, just this morning, this is breaking news. Um, our hamster, Pookie, has passed away. Uh, the the writing was on the wall when we were away on our holidays. Um, I blame my mother-in-law. Uh, we left... Cookie with the mother-in-law. Uh, Cookie. Cookie. Cookie the hamster. Cookie. H-O-O-K-I-E. No. Cookie. Cookie. A chocolate like, chip cookie. Like a chocolate chip cookie. Exactly. Cookie. 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 Is it hooky or cookie? I'm totally cookie. confused. Cookie. Cookie. Right. Okay. Cookie. I actually thought you were saying hooky. So Jesus. Um, yeah. Cookie, now he's two. He, 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 we got him two Christmases ago. So he's what? Two years and three months and however long he was in the shop before that. Uh, and I think they generally only last two years. So, you know, he's had a good run of it, but he um, he got his leg caught in the spinny wheel somewhere or something and did some damage about a week ago. And uh, it looked like the writing was on the wall. And uh, yeah, woke up this morning and he wasn't moving in the corner. Uh, which uh, the, the four-year-old, this is her first encounter with death. And um, I'm hoping that it's a reaction of shock rather than uh, a real reflection of her personality because she went, Cookie's dead. That's wonderful. <laughs> Just like I, I was laughing all morning, which I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm assuming is a form of shock and doesn't know what uh, death is or uh, the finality of this. That actually, Cookie's in a box out there and it's going in the back garden later on. <laughs> you won't be seeing Cookie again. They just and, uh, down there's, there's, there's not going to be a replacement it. Cookie either. Like how much? How much are part of every day life? Not a part every... at all. All right. Okay. So <laughs> Cookie was and, just. Uh, Cookie, was, Cookie was in the corner. You know, Cookie, I was I was delighted Cookie survived as long because he was in about a week and uh was quite ill, it seemed, on a couple of occasions, like frantically shaking and things like that, where I thought this this hamster's gone. Now. But uh he pulled through and two years later, um, you know, a good run of it. But like hamsters don't do very much anyways. He was always nibbling at you. If you went near him, there was no there was no motion or warmth from Cookie. Now maybe the four-year-old had something to do with that if uh, that was her reaction, God knows what was happening. And they only come out at night, really. You might see them in the morning. They sort of wake up at about half nine, ten o'clock at night, make a bit of noise. They're, They're like around. an ornament, really. They're not really a pet. Yeah. No, no. There's, there's, um, you know, the cage needs to be cleaned out once a week. They go around, they eat their little carrots and uh, get about their daily business. So, so yeah, there won't be a replacement. A dog has been mentioned. Well, a dog has been mentioned a lot. I, my wife had a dog growing up. I, um, I've never had a dog. Well, no, we had a dog uh, called Rush for about two weeks and then it started biting everything. People? Uh, that people. And that was the end of that dog. <laughs> right, okay. 
it was moved By the on. way, did you did you sit down with your four year old and say? This oh is yeah, we've been trying to explain that this is. That's oh, very sad. God, no, I, I think life. she definitely was just um, personally didn't grasp the scenario, but also was uh, probably a bit put out that everyone else was going. Oh, this is very sad. She's been told this is very sad. She's like, hey, why is it so sad? Well, That's maybe the you, I don't know. Nothing fact, sad has ever happened. She probably wasn't able to detect an iota of sadness in <laughs> your <laughs> behavior <laughs> as you were delivering the words. This is very sad. <laughs> this is very sad. Yeah. Does anyone want to buy a, a hamster cage? In fact, I'll just give it away for free. <laughs> so <laughs> this... is this you? You came back from Disney and Cookie was brown bread. No, no, Cookie was fine for uh, Cookie was back for a week. We had a good last week, sort of knowing that Cookie was on, but the leg was week together. Wait, leg was nearly hanging off. Like, so. oh, fuck. <laughs> no, I wasn't hanging off, but he he was basically trying to operate on three legs. Which, if you're a hamster, is it's <laughs> so optimal. <laughs> <laughs> like you, bring... you, you try and go on a hamster wheel on three legs. Did you uh, do you bring a hamster to the vet for that, or do you just say? Well, we were just discussing that on, on Sunday because we're like, this leg doesn't seem to be getting any better. So, I assume <laughs> if you bring it to the vet, there's only one thing going to happen. Uh, so that was, yeah, we were probably going to have to bring. Well, he could sew the leg. Uh, he or she could sew the leg back on, of course. Well, that'd be that'd be the worst case scenario where you have to spend a <laughs> <laughs> shit load of money. Well, so, so, the dog is lying happen. there. Cookie was obviously lying there in the cage overhearing these conversations taking <laughs> yeah, place. Yeah, like... bit, bit down on the cyanide tablet last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in the nursing home, knowing the right of the wall going, Jesus. I think it's very sad. Like, Cookie, you were talking about like how long the hamsters last. It wasn't actually old age that got him at all. It was like... He no, it was quite, I'd say it was a bit of both. That's like, I, I assume the activity. I assume that, well, I think for a uh, hamster going on the hamster wheel is not extreme activity. I assume yeah. the leg injury happened because he just couldn't move as well as he or she once did. Death by misadventure, Nathan, I think is what they call Exactly, it. exactly. When you Anyways, say he or she, you... you it's you uh, pretty much impossible. Know. As far as I know, it's pretty much impossible to tell with hamsters. Really? What? Yeah, very difficult to tell whether it's a he or she. <laughs> what? No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is their <laughs> gender not identified at birth? Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say they exactly come with a big pack of identification, no. do they? Like, they literally... You go, into, you go into... You go into... Pet stop or whatever it's called, and you go that one, and the uh, person who's working in there goes, "All right, fair enough," and off you go. They live in the corner of your. Sit this I'd recommend getting a hamster. If people want to get a hamster, get a hamster. Um, uh, do they not stink? Uh, no, no. You clean out their cage every week. No, they don't stink at all. They're too small to stink. Okay. You have to touch them. Are they not like a little bit like a rat, basically, just like yeah. a fat rat? Like they're uh, no, they're smaller even than a rat. Like they're tiny. Um, like a mouse, like a furry mouse. <laughs> yeah, but you can take them out and put them in their little ball and let them fly around the sitting room and all that. Right, that wouldn't that's be as, happening. That's as that's as entertaining as it gets. That would not be happening in our house. In our house, um, I, I we are very close to getting dog. Oof. Maybe maybe dogs. Oh, God. The one concern would be they'd be on their own during the day. For a long time which is kind of deemed to be unfair and so therefore getting two dogs would mean that they have some companionship and probably drive the rest of the neighbors absolutely bananas with the barking but um yeah it's just that uh we we got a lend of a dog where we were dog sitting for a week and the kids were like oh yeah we walk we absolutely every night and then day two no not going so so why yeah. do it then what, what are you doing like this is insane behavior well uh, obviously, you would hope that you, know, you need dog sitters, or you got to pay for the. Yeah, so that's another con. Like. No yeah. pros yet. So I haven't heard any pros yet. Keep going. Well, the, pros, the pros are that like they bring brightness to your life. I know, very cynical people I know who have got dogs who are like, yeah, it just change our lives, brought the family together. Will it's it bring like brightness to your life though, when you're the person who's to do all the walking, pay all the bills, clean up all the shit? Is is the walking a bad thing? Like, you know, as we were talking earlier on about the, like, this man will die of a heart attack. Maybe if I get a dog, I won't. See, I would have, uh, I would have that in the pros most definitely. And uh, is the walking is, you know, excuse to get out. You have no choice three or four times a day. And also apparently for, particularly for teenage boys, it's a very good thing because it gives them a sense of responsibility and it gets them out by themselves and that they're generally quite good at looking after dogs and that. Um, 
a sense of companionship. My biggest concern is that like, I'm very easily annoyed already. And there's a lot of things that easily annoy me in my life. And now we're adding one that is definitely going to annoy me on a regular basis. Why do I want to bring that stress? Like the, Firstly, you'd need to be a small dog. I don't want any dogs shedding all over the place. Yeah. Like, like, no offense to anybody, dogs, but I hate when you walk into a house and there's bloody, there's just dog hair everywhere. You can get dogs who've non-shedding dogs. Sort of non-shedding, thing. non-shitting dog is that don't smell. Uh, well, definitely, I do one. not want my house smelling of dog. But also, like we have an eleven-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a four-year-old. But it'd not be insanity to add a dog yeah. to the mix. Thank you, Adrian. Yeah, uh, maybe not calm everything down. How? <laughs> Well, because you can't shout when there's a dog. What? Of course you can. What? You just have to <laughs> shout louder. No. Yeah, because the dog won't shut up. No, because you'll, you'll scare the dog. You can't be you're like... Whereas the kids are fine. <laughs> 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 so Jer, well, Jer, Jer clearly is thought... Jer's like... I, 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 he already has a love for this dog that he is going to get. <laughs> <laughs> How are you offending <laughs> this, this dog I don't have yet? <laughs> so You're... two dogs, Adrian. Two dogs. Oh. Two dogs. Wow. No, definitely not two dogs. There's also I, like they are. We we had dogs when we were younger, and I remember. Uh, I'm still quite scared by playing around with uh, Judy out the front of the house and the, uh, my parents in a grocery shop. About the home. dog, eh? Oh, and um, they they <laughs> we had a grocery shop at home, and the tea delivery guy, Lions Tea, was coming up the road. It was like a cul-de-sac, so he he used to drive up. You can see where this is going. Uh, turn the car at the at the cul-de-sac and then come on back down again. I was having Judy, we were playing football out the front. She was a brilliant little footballer. Uh, we were playing curbsy, so I'd sort of hit her over her back. Whenever I'd miss the curb, Judy would like nudge the ball back to me. It was a great little relationship. Anyway, Lions T guy drives up the road. Judy was no more. Uh, oh, so I thought that's what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be the other way around that Judy had to go with the Lions T guy in this. Judy was in no fit state to be having oh. to go with anybody after uh, Why had to you somebody delivering tea to you? We did, as I was playing okay. with a grocery okay. shop. And um, no, no, so, it wasn't like... Oh, yeah, that's right. You're like, in bed. Long before an espresso the, started doing deliveries, Adrian's house and <laughs> live steam right. arrived twice a week. No. And um, sorry, Adrian, how traumatized were you there? You, you kind of... You so I, wit- I witnessed... I was I, I bore witness to all of this and um, it was really traumatic. Like, as you can imagine, dog is alive. Dog? Van arrives, dog is on totally the, like, dead flat, straight away. Flattened to the ground, hundred percent. Yeah, wow. a few few yelps, blah 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 blah. And then my dad had to come out and deal with the aftermath of um, her soul had left us, but um, gruesome. Her body was, uh, gruesome, exactly. And uh, it was pretty traumatic. Like I, I think about it. I still think about it if I'm playing out with the kids and stuff around the road, which might not be the worst thing in the world on one level. But uh, anyway, my point is, you get very attached to these dogs, and then like you know, it's something else in your life that can. You know, I feel as if I'm maybe giving a little bit too much now. Um, something else in your life that can obviously pass on to another world, and it could, the the passing away of the dog, in my experience, is infinitely more real than old Cookie uh, passing on to the next world. Oh, like Jesus, Cookie is only dead about three hours. <laughs> I don't know yet the full impact of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's clearly having a huge impact on you. Uh, I want uh, listeners with dogs who have young kids, not who had dogs beforehand. So I've never had a dog in my life, never had a dog in my house. How much of a shock to the system. Like, I'm thinking I can put this, I'm hoping I can put this off three or four years. Because there is also a bit now in my head, like not that we ever really go anywhere aside from a, a holiday, but there's that bit of, Suddenly, like, the dog is always bloody there. What if you just want to go is, somewhere for the weekend? You have to get someone to mind the dog. Are you not getting... What, what age did you say your eldest is? 11. 11, so then he's four years' time, he's 15. Like, yeah. So, like, you're nearly missing the boat there. Yeah, there probably is a sweet spot, right? Or never. Or never. Especially now you've nothing to look forward to for the rest of the year and now you blew your wad in, in yeah. Disneyland. <laughs> 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 I don't think anybody should respond to that. Really, but, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bin Laden. Uh, I mean, I mean money's been... <laughs> oh, that's the real, real positive spin on the rest of Nathan's 2023. I thought yeah. you were going to say the rest of his life, I have to say it, so that's not too bad. Oh, my goodness. Um, 
Okay. So I, I'm I'm in favor of getting the dog. I don't know why we haven't done it yet, but it's it's kind of one of those things that we've talked about. I, <clears throat> are you getting a rescue dog or are you going to pay for yeah. a dog? No, no, we go we go to the pound. Uh, you can get whatever you want at the pound these days if you're if you're into your designer, um, but we're not. But anyway, I should I should say that uh, we have a track record of like uh yes, we will can we get fish? Yes, we get fish. Went to the aquarium, bought the thing, like spent a fortune on getting like all of the gear so that like because you have to have it at a certain temperature to get fish that are in any way interesting otherwise they're just boring and uh that has sat unplugged in for eight months like it's perfect we, we got everything you actually have to like you have to have it plugged in for two weeks to get the water to the right temperature and that's the one bit we haven't done and we just didn't do that and we, it's like I, where are the fish did you get fish we didn't we got everything but the fish okay. <laughs> <laughs> We know it's really expensive and it's fucking not cheap. Really expensive gear that's sitting there. And I'm like, you know, it was kind of at the start of the energy crisis. I was like, do we really want to have something plugged in 24 hours a day? Also, I'm a bit, I'm a bit scared of the electrics in the house that we moved into last year. Like we haven't had the place rewired. So, you know, I can see how this fish tank would burn the house down at some point, at least in my head. But like, honestly, you just have to do the whole thing, get to the end of the bit. So you're going to buy a kennel. <laughs> buy all the dog food, buy all the grooming material, buy the pet insurance, line up the vet, line up the dog minders, yeah. and then not get a dog. Pay the dog minder for a few shifts in the bags. <laughs> get it in the, in the books. I'm astonished, Cher, that this is even under consideration. It's been mentioned a few times in my house, and there's just no chance. I've never had a dog in the house. I'm not against dogs. I mean, I'll someone's dog oh, yeah. wanders up and wants to be petted and has have a little play that's no problem but it's the sheer expense and the consumption of my time which i already feel is at a premium and the 100 percent certainty that i will be the man or person tasked with all of the upkeep all of the maintenance all of the education all of the expense all of the cleaning and at the start everyone will be a great to pitch in and they'll do some of the walking and they'll look they will not it'll be me it'll be all me and for that reason i'm out <laughs> i would think uh thanks duncan panatine um i think uh the point about the two right so it's obviously an accepted thing that you get two dogs and they look after each other but jesus christ Jerry, that's like uh you're going is that, is that you're like that is a serious commitment like two dogs one, yeah surely go for one just to begin with same, so, you know. i think it's kind of the same commitment though Oof. double the shitting like but it's, it's grand that like the shitting they you know you just clean up it's like they it's not. The, you see this is again the shitting is fine when it's a nice solid shit that you can put in a bag <laughs> it's when you're walking along the park and you see you're like holy how did it what the hell produced that and it's you know it's unscoopable you're just still talking brains. still talking dogs right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god because as we know from a previous Adrian Barry story, it's not only the dog shitting in the park. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a hedge, to be fair. That was a hedge. <laughs> which you went, we moved, which uh, you went back three days later to scoop up. Oh, I my mean, God. It was actually much... Anyway, let's not go back there. <laughs> it was only totally scoopable, at least. It was you could. It was easy to do, but yeah. Freeze dry it. You bring it for... Yeah, I don't know. But I do see... Like, I see um, dog owners... And it is different if it's a nice solid dump and it's scooped up in three seconds. But I see dog owners like standing on someone's driveway and look, they're looking down, oh, scratching their head, gone. How, how, am I, how am I going to get this into the back that I brought with me? And I'm walking by them going, why are you doing this to yourself? Like, seriously, like only a power hose is going to be able to do the job here. And you are literally trying to scoop yeah. up a runny dump of a public footpath, and not, a, not and then you're going to carry that, literally carry a bag of shit around with you for the next forty minutes. Why do people put themselves through this? The dog loves you, Dave. Dog, the dog loves you in a way that your children never will. The dog doesn't care about you cleaning the shit up off the footpath. Is the only thing. It's, uh, they, I, I know somebody who used to who used to walk their dog and uh, would so the dog would take a dump, and this person would put the bag onto their hand, Maria, that they were going to pick it up. And we'll go down somewhere in the vicinity 
<laughs> like pick a few blades of grass, <laughs> wrap it up. Oh. I got up the road. <laughs> yes. Come back. Uh, if we all if we all got uh, if we all got dogs, we could have a dog cast, which would probably you know be way more popular. widely successful, <laughs> way more yeah. popular, very relatable, v- very very relatable. <laughs> uh, this is definitely an area where the listeners have far more expertise than us. Dadcast at offtheball.com at dadcastpod on Twitter. You can slide into our DMs. They are open. Dadcast is in partnership with Nivea Men. Want to feel great in your skin? Nivea Men has you covered from sensitive tailored skincare to cleansing and anti-age. Try Ireland's number one men's skincare brand. Has anybody got anything else they want to get off their chest? I'm out. For me, I'm out. Right. Definitely out. Best best of luck with the grieving process, Nathan. (laughs) All right, well, the burial, the burial has to take place later. Hang on, Disneyland was good. The one thing I was uh, noticing there, you spent every minute of every day with them. There was no kids camps. There was no escape. There was no. You're definitely not coming back. <laughs> Haven't made any more babies. Uh, uh, no. Um, I well, I did. I did. Um, I did have one day. Um, uh, uh of escape. Uh, where I uh, managed to get myself to. Uh, Augusta National for people who are listening. <laughs> yeah, um, which was yeah that was that I, that was an enjoyable day. Like, oh, nice was about to explain having a full day of sex. Great. Uh, that was. Um, <laughs> what a what a <laughs> biggest smile on my face. A full day. That's a day at like, Augusta yeah. National. Wow. Are good. Um, Thirty seconds and then. Yeah, like it's fun. Like this, I would. Um, it's obviously a definitely a once in a lifetime holidays. We kept telling the kids, "This is our once in a lifetime." Enjoy this. Uh, it's full on um, Disney World, but it's yeah, it's unbelievable. Like it is fifteen hours a day entertainment um, in a variety of different parks, water parks, uh, roller coasters, any amount of experiences, meeting all the different characters, parades, fireworks, uh, you name it. Um, yeah, no, it was class, absolutely class. Couldn't recommend it enough. Right, so it was good. Not a not overwhelming, not too much. Like no, no, we now we we only did Disney World. I know a lot of people when they go to Orlando, uh, sort of do a mix of Universal Studios and Disney World. And we decided our youngest one was too young for Universal, and the lads aren't really into Harry Potter and a huge amount of Universal at the moment is Harry Potter stuff. So that meant we stayed in Disney World, which was a massive advantage because you get in an hour early to everything and you get access to all their transport and all that whereas if you're which was what we had initially planned on doing staying say in a in a hotel halfway between and hiring a car and driving up and down like it, it's a bloody big place like disney world's the size of san francisco disney world itself never mind orlando um you know it's probably Actually, half an hour drive from one from one end of it to the other it is Wow. So the hotel we were staying in was was really handy and that was beside a Skyliner, which brought you to two of the parks. But we had to get a bus to Magic Kingdom, which took definitely 20 minutes, 25 minutes, like a shuttle bus up. Um, yeah, it's insane how it's hard to get your head around how big it is. And then That's Universal cool. Studios isn't quite that size. But I think if you have older kids, like I would say if we'd gone in sort of three years time, the kids would have far more enjoyed Universal Studios. Um but then, like, you've got SeaWorld, all the other stuff that you can do if you want to, you know, if you're into SeaWorld. I kind of thought SeaWorld was, you know, free willy by the kill SeaWorld. But apparently not. Apparently it's still uh, still there and doing quite well. well you make uh, life choices, Nathan. But, uh, I didn't go to SeaWorld. You didn't go, come on. I didn't go you got to uh, watch the documentary. Um, uh, yeah. No, it, uh, like, se- seven days was enough in that we had sort of done everything. And on the last day, we kind of... You know, picked a couple of things we wanted to go back to, and but you know, there's like a Disney Springs place there, which is basically a big shopping complex, but it's you know, Coca Cola World and M M&M and World, and the stuff that the 11 year old was very excited about. In fact, the the most excited I saw uh, the 11 year old and the nine year old the entire trip was when we we went up to Atlanta then and we stayed with friends of ours and we pulled in to get petrol and went into the shop and there was a fridge full of Prime. I mean, a full fridge. There was like 40 different varieties. There was the 200 bottles in there. The lads were like, this is the greatest thing I have ever seen. So Prime, yeah. for anyone who, do you, know, do you know what Prime is? Yeah, surely you brought them home and paid for your holiday. Oh yeah, we did. Well, they uh, they brought many. We were trying to weigh the bags uh, coming back going, how many bottles of Prime have you brought back home? For drinking or for what? For drink- the, well, no, they, were, on giving eBay, them, they were giving them to their uh, 
they were giving them to their friends uh, who were also very excited about this. There's two different types, though. There's the one that's really bad for you that's got about, obviously, 100 um, spoons of sugar in it. And then there's just a one that tastes a bit like my wadi. That probably also has something pretty bad to show you. But like one dollar, one dollar a pop. Yeah. It's 15 quid they're going for over here. Still, still, yeah. Right. Wow. Uh, people are fucking idiots. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We should do like a special um, screening of Nathan's holiday photographs, like an event, dadcast event, where you can. Yeah, Everybody and smile and look like we're having a good time. <laughs> I just want to see what the kids are out like uh, after they have prime, basically crack cocaine. It, again, I think they, I, they definitely wanted the mad um, Gatorade style. So one of them is the Gatorade style alternative, and the other one is just the more juice. So they weren't getting the Gatorade style alternative. And I think they were maybe a bit disappointed in it, but they couldn't say. They were expecting right. something that would blow their minds, but it was just like, as I say, kind of my wadi. Can I just ask there before we wrap, um, what's the plan for the ceremony? Is there a priest coming in or a uh, rabbi or what's the plan? Uh, non-denominational. Non-denominational, okay. Oh, well, well, you think it, should we have a cremation? Actually, that... Yeah. Oh. I don't think you technically would be permitted to have a cremation. Legally, legally, I don't think it's you're not allowed to. That'd just be that. like lighting a fire and, and loving cooking and you and in on top of it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would be afterwards. against animal welfare. <laughs> I would imagine so. You have the protesters at your door. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if burial is the right way either, but I don't know. What that do sounds you... grim. Uh, Throwed in the bin, no? In the recycling. <laughs> like the, the, the... compost bin. Crap, yeah. no, the crap bin. Yeah. Jesus. The compost. Oh, yeah, but the crap bin isn't going for another week. <laughs> That's a... Somebody else's crap bin. <laughs> I don't know. People bury their cats and their dogs in the back garden, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Jesus. Do they, do they oh. bury them? Do they bury them? And yeah. actually, they, no, they, they, they do. They, they, do actually bury bury them. Them. they don't bury them. They <laughs> bury them. <laughs> Well, you, like wanna, up... you, you need to you want to go deep wouldn't you like for so that it isn't been well, cookie's not been dug up by yeah. foxes and in in six months time when we forgot that we buried cookie there and try to put a plant in it's like oh jesus well that's probably what you want is a fox to come and run off a cookie and have themselves a little, uh, little feast there's a lot of foxes around would you put um are you gonna put up a little headstone like a little Hamster. This is what happened. Like the the the, 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 the great. You know, this isn't succession. This isn't succession where we've moved on quickly and are. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Cocky was he, he, he slash she lived her lived yeah, yeah. abandoned. <laughs> Never stopped running. <laughs> well, some, he did. Some wheel and <laughs> Right up, right up until nearly the end. <laughs> right. Until the leg desperately, fell desperately sad situation. <laughs> Didn't have a leg to stand on. Hey, on that note. <laughs> wow. The dark cast will be back at some indeterminate time. No, we're actually going to do another one next week, right? That's we are. Apparently. We get, get, your, get your dog trivia in. <laughs> Darkcast at offthewall.com. Best of luck. See you, folks. <laughs>